Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, there are two things that are interesting about it. No, three things that are interesting about it. One, I talk with an artist who was actually one of the first people that I ever interviewed on this podcast when I started it back in 2017. Uh, he's a local painter here. Uh, I actually posed at, for one of his sessions. He teaches painting as well in a studio that he runs. And the other thing was, is this entire interview was recorded live on a local radio station here in town, WRTFM. Then I guess the third thing would be, this is just an audio episode. And it's, it was, it was all live and we had to fill an hour and it was, it was very strange. It was weird because I'm used to being able to, as we go along, if there's things like pauses in between, or I have to think of a question or anything like that, I can just edit that stuff out. This was us just talking for an hour and it was, I don't know why it seemed so intimidating. I mean, I talk to people all the time. I think it was just not having a net. I don't know, something like that. But it's a, it's a great interview, and I was really happy that I got to meet up with him again. He has since switched studios twice, and all the new place he has, we talk about that. And he's a fantastic fine art painter. So here is my interview starting right now. <laughs> Uh, my name is Philip Salamone, and I run an art school focused on more traditional, classically inspired ways of seeing and making drawings and paintings. And I also make art, and I also teach at Madison College. I teach a drawing fundamentals class over there. I saw that. When did you start doing that, actually? I just found... Okay, so uh, again, like I said, everybody, the uh, I I know Phil. I've run into him, and actually, this was a chance for me to catch up, so I'm just going to be asking random things like this. So when did you start... This is the first semester. Uh, it, this is the first semester. Mm -hmm. So how did you how did you hook up something like that? Like, how did you start teaching at... And it's Madison College now, not MATC anymore. Yeah. That's okay. my understanding, yeah. Yeah. It's, so when did you... You started doing it a little while ago. How did you hook that up? Uh, they reached out to me. And did they really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, like, just... Oh, man, I don't... I, I'm always so surprised when people are able... Like, they're sitting there, and it's like, how did you get it? And it's like, someone just contacted you. So, so what are you doing in this class? Well, this one's online, but, I mean, I'm teaching beginning drawing, and I've been teaching be beginning drawing through my own studio and through the... Uh, through the University of the UW, yeah. uh, uh, through the Continuing Studies Department. And so I had been teaching these type of classes for a while to, like, the community in general. Okay. Um, and I had been teaching online classes for a while. And so, um, yeah, and so I, I feel pretty comfortable doing it, but you're always learning. Right. Sure. Would, now, you started teaching, obviously, because of the pandemic, I'm assuming. Because you used to have in-house ones, or did you always do online teaching? No, I just started online during the pandemic. Okay. And so, now, with that, what do you think of that behind... I actually am... I think it could go both ways, really. There's there's benefits and, you know, drawbacks to it, but what do you think of teaching online? Like, do you reach a broader audience? Is it still local? Uh I prefer in person. Okay. Uh, I, I think everybody like, does. It's true. But I think everyone does, yeah. But I mean, there are students that you can reach that you can't reach uh, in person. You know, yeah. There's people who can take the class that can't otherwise. And actually, for drawing, I feel like it's very feasible to do it online. It's a little tougher to do sculpture. It's a little tougher to do figure drawing. But for like, for like learning to draw, it's... It's doable. It's not ideal. I feel like you you don't really know the students as well. You yeah. Know? It's like you just, you don't, you know, as, as if, you know, it's just different than yeah. having them in the room. Um, you're not checking in as frequently. It's, um, it's, uh, yeah, like, like you're making videos, you know, and it's just like, I feel like just engagement in general is just like, it's, it's just a little harder to attain in an online class. And more than anything, it's like, um, there's just like a spirit in the room when like yeah. everyone's drawing together. And when you're like giving a demonstration and just like you're, you know, you know these people and you're walking around and you're seeing their work and the students are seeing other people's work and you see the work on the walls and just like, there's just like, it's just a different thing than doing that on your own and then showing it to the class like, you know, a week later. Yeah. Are you recording them or are they 
like I, I, I thought the way, I, yeah, the way this works is like I, I make videos and then they do the work and then and then we okay. have like a actually group that critique, is a huge basically. difference then. So it's not like you're there, they're all live, they're watching you do this and you're talking to them and they're able to ans- ask and respond. Yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. doing that. No, it's not like that. Oh, that's like too that. bad. Why not? Um, because I. Well, I guess because I had some of these videos prepared and okay. I, I made more videos and like PowerPoints and I, I guess I, um, it's a little hard to set up, um, I don't know, I guess well, actually, I had that tried is, that, but this seemed to work better. That, that actually made me think of another question too. So what is the setup? Because if you were doing them live, I mean, drawing is different than just having like a face-to-face meeting where everybody's just looking at each other and they've got the you know the talking head situation you're you're doing drawing people would be drawing on their end you're drawing on your end like the camera setup i guess would be really involved for both the people at home yeah, and the that's pe- the other reason yep yep because i'm mostly drawing from life okay and so i'm not like and so you're you kind of need you need a camera on your subject a camera on your 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 picture you're making if you're painting you kind of want a a camera on your palette yeah Uh, maybe one on me probably that's not really necessary um and so and i like i just don't have the facilities to do that i don't really know how to do that but like (laughs) um i mean we're making it work and it's like i feel like it works all right i'm just like over it <laughs> right i'm like i'm not over well, I mean, it. I mean, you're I, still... like it's a good iron in the fire but like i really i'm just right. excited to get back to being in person yeah and and you are now right the cl- you are doing live classes now at your studio at my studio i am yep, yep. okay and then next semester at madison college they will be okay and, yeah um, and one more qu- i still want to know one more thing about the the live setup so are you editing these videos where you'll cut to the the drawing and then cut to you talk I, I guess is there is there some sort of editing that you doing you're doing or yeah. like yep yep, yep. Okay. it's all different it's all different and so you're doing like, this all yourself I mean yeah but it's not like <laughs> a very high production thing like yeah I mean like <laughs> I mean, I like I like record myself drawing. I, I did a watercolor class over the pandemic. I did some like drawing and painting ones. So like you record yourself doing it, and then you um, you try and learn like iMovie, and right? Then you right. Edit the best you can, and like people are understanding. Uh, one benefit though was that, well, I learned how to do that. But another benefit mm-hmm. was um, it was easier to include like visual images in your like I I I, I used to just show up and do a demo, but now I have like. PowerPoints and like 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 oh. like like this painting, like this artist did, and so like with the videos, you kind of have that opportunity to show painting, like master paintings or examples easier that I wasn't, I, I just wasn't doing before yeah. the pandemic. It's one um, of those things where you always go, I need to do that someday, but it's just it seems like something totally. you go, I have other things to do. Totally. And here was one where you actually needed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So I'm excited to just like include that in just like the whole structure of everything yeah um it's just really helpful because it's a visual medium and so to be able to see other artists doing that i think is really is really helpful yeah and you said you were doing watercolor now had you always done watercolor i knew you as an oil painter and i guess had you been doing watercolor this whole time too i i started watercolor like maybe four years ago or three years ago or something yeah 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 so what do you think of uh, i mean i remember i had asked you previously on the podcast i asked you about oil and it's because you can walk away come back days later and it's still yeah you can still mess with it yeah watercolor you can't oh watercolor (laughs) watercolor is the whole thing i kind of like i sort of fell in love with watercolor a little bit uh but it's an acquired taste for sure um i just like you know we have these models at the studio and it's like three or four days a week and so you're just painting people all the time and after a while you um, you're just like always looking for inspiration and like you just right. kind of after a while you're just like you just want to try something new and like one of my friends uh, Bernie Tennis was had been doing watercolor with us and he does beautiful watercolors and so um, I could use him as a resource Yeah, and it was really I kind of had this theory that like, oh, I already have done the heavy list lifting for watercolor because like I already did this classical training and I learned how to like see proportions and values and light and anatomy and all these things. Mm-hmm. Just like translating that to watercolor should be, um, you know, that's the easy part. Is it? Um, no, it is not <laughs> at all. <laughs> it was a whole thing. But like... I wouldn't think so. Okay. Well, I mean, but it was like... Um, 
I still do feel like I did most of the work. You know, I feel like mm-hmm. if you can play classical piano, oh, of course, someone gives yeah. you a guitar, like, you know, it'll take a minute to like get your muscle memory, you know, to figure out, okay, this is an F chord, not this. But you you already have the ear and and you know what you're trying to say, but how to create that value you're adding water <laughs> right. to get lighter, you know, and, and just like, but it seems working. so much harder to control. I mean, the paper absorbs it, it and everything, Yeah, but that's the joy of it, you know, <laughs> like, but that's what you say, joy, I, I disagree on, but it, no, it but seems like, far think, more difficult. Well, yeah, but we don't always, but again, like people love pen and ink. People love like, True. you know, sculpting in marble, like because something's hard, like a lot of times that's why people like it. And I think if you, um yeah i don't know i just like it's it's challenging but also it's like i don't know maybe english is harder to learn than spanish but like yeah. once you learn it you're fluent and you can just speak in that language and so it's like it's not necessarily harder once you learn it well that makes me think too i never asked did you start out drawing or did you start out painting like is it i guess would one need to be before the other well, that's a whole chicken the egg thing here isn't it it's, uh Usually people start drawing before right, they start yeah, painting. But, I, just but like, I don't know. I, I mean, I could just be, I'm assuming that. And I guess now I never really thought to ask that. Yeah, like, yeah, would yeah. you do that yeah. and then go into painting? Or would you start out with painting? And Well, I would say most most kids probably pick up, you know, right. drawing mediums before they pick up painting mediums. And the way that, and that's what I did. And then when I went to, I, I had painted on my own before that. But then I when I did the training in New York, the way that they do it is... Um, the way that it's historically been done where it's like you start off drawing inanimate plaster casts and then you start drawing the figure and then painting in grisaille which is black and white and then painting in color uh and then and so you're kind of like learning to juggle with like three balls and then four balls and then four balls and two chainsaws right (laughs) It's actually a really good analogy. Uh, were you talking about uh, college that you were learning this, or are no, you in high school, or you just learned it yourself? That training I was talking about was in New York. They yes. don't. That's kind of tough to come by. Well, okay. it's, it's easier now, and that's what I'm trying to create, in, yeah. or what I am creating in Madison. So, how did you get started then? If that, if you were out in New York, like where? How did it begin out in New York? Well, I went to college here at mm-hmm. the UW, and I had, I had always wanted to I had just like my favorite artists were just like older artists I I just like you know I like a lot of modern art but I just wasn't as moved by it as I was the older painters yeah and after college I I just started looking for a program that was offering what I was looking for and I found out that they don't really offer degrees for that type of thing really yeah. Oh. Yeah. They, it's, it's the, if you want a degree, it's more focused on kind of like, what are you trying to say and what's your contribution to the, to the field? And it's more concept driven, which is so important. Yeah. But, um, for me, I wanted to learn the language before I kind of knew what I wanted to say. And I was just like really motivated by craft and beauty and like skill. And I just like, I just wanted to learn how to paint without using photos. And I just like the, the people that really moved me, like the, that's, that's not something that they were focused on here. And I, I soon learned at any university. And so I found a school in New York, the Grand Central Atelier and spent three years out there. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say I learned how to paint, but I, I learned what I needed to do to, figure out how I wanted to paint. Yeah. Cause those programs, like they don't really teach you how to paint. They teach you like, they teach you what they know. They teach you how they paint and they kind of, they kind of teach you the concepts and they teach you how to see, but like you, they just like give you all these tools and then you need to kind of go off and figure out how to use those tools and how to apply it to your vision and something that works for you. And, in a way that the world is going to compensate you for and in mm-hmm. a way that is like meaningful to you because like i don't know that that just takes a while to like kind of find your voice like that and were there other was everybody else learning the same thing that you were or were you all free to explore in your own mediums or styles or 
you're totally free to explore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just okay. not as focused on as like, what are you trying to say with this piece? It's like, we're all painting a person here. Yeah. And, and that's what I wanted to know, too, is uh, uh, painting people and the way that you do it and finding the background and the way that you just described it now. Like, how how do you find the people that you paint? And also, I guess the second question would be during the pandemic, how did you do that? But first, how do you find the people that you have that, that you paint? Um, well, well, just to answer your your last question real yeah. quick, um, there's everyone like I feel like you're still expressing yourself in a uh, in a very meaningful way, just like through through how you're describing uh, those people or those plaster casts or like how you're painting, how yeah. your brush strokes, how you're. Um, and so, and there, there is a wide variety in how people do that. And like, um, you know, I would say, I would kind of equate it to like handwriting, you know, oh. like everyone's handwriting is, is kind of different. And if you look at a bunch of, bunch of different paintings, they're all going to look just like the model, but they're all going to have their own kind of unique flavor. Yeah. And so I, I do feel like everyone has, you know, their own, their own kind of style to that, but it is, it is all the same subject matter. Okay. Um, I mean, for the most part, you know, you can right. choose your composition and stuff. Uh, and then how do I choose the people I paint? Well, uh, I mean, I, yeah, it's just like, it's all different models. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's nude models. Sometimes it's portraits. Sometimes it's people that are my friends or, or people that I respect. Or sometimes it's um, costume people who like, I don't really like to dress people up in costumes, but if people, um, if people have something that is them that embodies them like either mm -hmm. they make their costume or it's a or if it's something that they that they're you know if it's part of their profession or something um i don't know i mean i i, I guess it's like i love painting artists and musicians you know i i guess mm -hmm. i feel like if um if someone really wants to do it they'll probably be a good model. <laughs> still well. Um, a good point. I mean, there's yeah. really no, you know, like requirement. Uh, it's yeah. Just be yourself. Yeah. Huh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. But similarly, if they don't want to do it, then it's just really hard to, you know, it's, you're staring at their face, you know, and right. there's like a, there's like an energy there that, um, it's tough too. So, uh, because you asked me after we talked on the first season of my podcast and I had come down and post totally, for it, yeah, yeah. and it is weird. I'll just say as a person who's never done it before, I'm, it, I'm kudos to the people that are able to do it. Cause it, it's strange. And yeah, yeah it's the, it's I'm different. trying not to move and it's I don't different. know how much I can move. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, some of that's on me. I need to let people know, but, um, we're very flexible. I think we're, no, it was great. Bunch. It was yeah. just, no, I, cool, I yeah. felt weird. It's, it's weird to have people pay attention to you for that long. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> some people love that. Some people hate it. Yeah. You got a big spotlight on you and you're up on a stage and then it's, you know, you walk around and you got all these different like angles of you, versions of you, like yeah. sort of like styles, mediums. It's, I think it's, it, it seems fun from a model's perspective. I mean, well, it's, it's a blast from my perspective. And then during the pandemic, I didn't have any sessions. I just like, I kind of needed the time off. I oh, just really? like, yeah, I, I just, I didn't have the right studio space. And I just like, um, I was just in a place where I just like, I just needed a break and I kind of welcomed it. And, um, I, um, yeah, and it, it taught me a lot for sure. And so during the pandemic, I had a few commissions and so I, I was mostly painting people from imagination and it was like really fun and challenging and it wasn't always fun. <laughs> imagination how? Like you were paint, were you painting them in surreal ways or you were trying to picture people that you actually knew but weren't using them as subject matter? Like I, I guess, how would you uh, Well, say? when I say painting from imagination, I mean uh, you're either, when you, when you paint a picture, you're either, you're either looking at a reference, like a photo or yeah. someone from life, or you're imagining something, right? Like comic book artists would, they, they don't use reference. True. Um, although they've painted enough people or drawn enough people to know kind of how people look. Yeah. And so, uh, and that was a big thing that the, the schools in, in New York teach is just like an understanding of anatomy, an understanding of light, an understanding of perspective, of color phenomena to, so that you can kind of, um, I mean, you could theoretically paint without a model, but you also know what to look for when you're looking at the model. And 
that's one of the things that that that's one of the things that's different when you're working from life. If you're just working from a photo, you don't necessarily need to have that understanding of visual phenomena because you can just like squint down and like copy those shapes and colors and yeah. you know, copy every pixel and it'll it'll eventually look like what you're looking at, but it's a very different thing than the painters that I admire were doing because life is moving people are moving right if you're painting if 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 otherwise if you're doing a landscape you got the light source moving across the sky uh and just like even a still life still lifes are you know you you're moving but it's not just things are moving it's the value range is greater and we interpret photos different than we interpret reality yeah and so kind of having this tool set of understanding what you're looking at is really um, it's something that I've just like spent a lot of time trying to cult- cultivate as well as just like looking really hard and copying what I'm seeing. And so like during the pandemic, I had a few commissions where they were just like multi-figure compositions. And like, I was trying to, I just like, it was, it was just like a challenge to myself to like kind of do some sketches. And then I actually built clay maquettes. And so I built this whole scene out of clay, like people made out of clay and then uh, shine light on them. And then, um, really, yeah, I it was wild. I could show you a photo sometime. Yeah, um, and then, um, yeah, it was it's kind of weird because, like, I don't know. You're just so used to like really studying something before you make every single brush stroke, so, and to like just remove like a, that is just <laughs> surreal. <laughs> well, and that's like you're imagining the thing that you're going to paint. So you're also adding sculpting and creating that. And then you're going to paint the thing that you just imagined. So it's like a double imagination thing. You're creating your own like inception <laughs> in a way in a way i think it's it's well but when you're creating something you're trying to make it look as like three-dimensional had you, you know. done sculpture before we did some in new york yeah okay all but, right but just that idea of like if you want to make something look 3d you make a 3d model of it That's and then you get a real good idea of how light falls on those subjects and and uh, I mean, you still got to account for like local value. I mean, it's still, it's still, it has a different style and it has a different well, look. It's probably smaller scale why... too. Or how big did you make the sculptures? I guess. Well, I guess... the sculptures were small, but the paintings okay. were big. Yeah. How big do you usually paint? Well, the paintings I'm doing at the studio now are just like they're they're usually just like one or two sessions, and so like anywhere from like. Um, I don't know, maybe 11 by 14 up to like 20 by 24. Okay. But if I were doing a lot of people, it would be a bigger picture. That's a good point. I guess if you needed to fit that in there. And how did you start your studio and why? Like, I, I that just occurred to me. I've never asked you, like, I just as- accepted that you've had the studio and I've been there. But it's like, right now I'm trying to start a place that I'm going to be in. And I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. So <laughs> how did, how did you, like even begin this studio and then start doing classes and how does one even go into that um i don't know how one does it but (laughs) (laughs) um i just rented a studio and put signs up around town and um yeah i mean for a while it there weren't a lot of people and you know cab driving paid the bills but after a while you know you just I felt like, and I still feel like there's a space for this in Madison. I just, I, I, I feel like there's not, you know, there just wasn't, and there's still not really places that are, um, that have models to draw that, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's like short poses or long poses. And I feel like if you, if you just like get good models and like good, just like a good environment where people people want to show up to, if it's just like a good crowd and good music and food and just like just like creating I mean I know it's like not everyone's favorite thing to do weirdly <laughs> <laughs> but like there are people out there that enjoy it and I mean I, I just like love painting people and I love painting people with people and you just learn so much when yeah. you're with other people and I also just like need that community I, I just like need to be around people to share these ideas with how long have you been doing it for at what Atelier? 10 years. Really? Yeah, pretty wild. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And yeah. how do you pronounce that? I've always I always mispronounce or feel like I'm mispronouncing the name of of that. Everyone does. Yeah, it's atelier. It's atelier. Like, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, a French word. Okay. Yeah. It's just like to denote like that. That was the name of like that's like it means like workshop or something. That that like it's a way to just like it's a word that they use to like to just kind of to kind of separate yourself from like like this type of training this type of school that's like focused on this type of thing okay um because i do feel like it's very different like what i learned in new york was so different than what i was studying out here and that was really probably the inspiration of why you wanted to start it to begin with i'm assuming i just wanted to like be a resource for i, I wanted to like be the change i wanted to see you know i wanted to like be i, I wasn't I, I wanted to like, I wanted to provide what I had been looking for mm -hmm. here. Right. And how did you find the students as well? You said you put up flyers and stuff and you needed the models and the students. I I'm, mean, did they just start uh, coming? Oh, I guess, I guess I that mean, also adds to the, how do you years. start this? <laughs> uh, how do you start it? I mean, geez. I mean, I'm finding people is tough. Even just promoting your stuff, let alone going, come on in and I'll yeah, teach you yeah, how yeah. to do it. Yeah. Um, how do I find students? Well, I, you know, it's a small town and it's an even smaller art community. And I feel like if you're doing something well, like I feel like the best marketing is just market to the people who are ready buy your product. And so if there's people who are showing up at the studio, like if you give them a good experience, hopefully they'll come back and hopefully they'll tell other people. And if there's people that like your work and buy something, you know, same. Um, and I mean, you could, like, where are you going to put signs up? You know, where are you going to advertise? Where do right. artists hang out? Like, I don't know. There's like one art, art store in here, you know, or like a couple <laughs> art stores. Like, right. Instagram might help. Uh, I got an email list now. I mean, I've had one, but it's like big now. Big for me. Brag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, but that's the, like, I don't, I'm terrible at using it, though. Uh, I'm no, like the I, worst I at emailing and any sort of marketing I'm terrible at. But I like, but I mean, do I market, right? You, I mean, if you call that marketing, do you do you actually pay for advertising? Do advertising? I want to say I've seen some of no, your stuff advertised. No, but okay. I mean, if you have a show that's advertising, and if if your your work is out in the world, it's advertising. And if if you're if people like your instruction and your space that you're providing for the community, and yeah. they're you know returning or telling people like that's marketing. In my eyes, yeah, and you also... do stay connected with a lot of the artists. Whenever I run into you, you always tell me about someone new, and then somebody I need to check out, and somebody I've never heard of before. You say this is a small town, but it's like I can still walk down the street, and there are people I walk by that I'll never yeah, see totally. again. You know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you've you've turned me on to a lot of different artists. So how how do you keep up with them or find them? Are they, you know, is it a back and forth? Do you seek them out? Do you just go on Instagram and search for a certain tag? Like, how are you finding these artists here locally? I don't really, um, I mean, I have sessions at my studio yeah. four days a week, you know, and then there's also instructed ones. And so there's like, you just meet enough artists in the community that, that, I mean, the ones that, the ones that, or yeah, just between the classes you teach, you know, like people will, people come through or. Yeah different events i don't really know do you I go to really a lot of the much. gallery shows or openings that these other artists have uh i try to but yeah i um, mean it's not easy i know that it, i guess that that seemed like i was going do you even go anywhere um i mean i'm like <laughs> kind of good at it but yeah i'm not it's not my strength but um i try to yeah, yeah i try, I try to. to as well and you actually um did a a what was it you did a online happy hour a while back. Oh yeah, with Chasen. Yeah, yeah. That was what cool. was that all that about? Cool. So I, I remember I saw it. It was one of those things where I saw it after it happened, and I even think I cool. messaged you and said yeah, I totally yeah. missed it. You it's did. available yeah, yeah, online. Yeah. It, yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah. You could still it, see it. Yeah. So how did you how did you hook that up? What was? Uh, why were you the the online happy hour guy? <laughs> it's just a thing that the Chasen did when yeah. when the pandemic started. They were just like they were just doing. They were just. It was a way to connect with you know artists with the community. Yeah. And um. Yeah, I tried to make that sort of applicable to like non-artists and I tried to like kind of share my work in a way that might, um, I don't know, that just might be a little more accessible to people. Uh, I, sometimes I just don't like artist talks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, but I, I wanted to make it like how might this yeah. apply to, to people. Right. And so, um, 
yeah and so that's how i that's how i did that one okay and it was showing uh you did kind of like a tour of your new studio didn't you not then i didn't have the new studio well i had a lot of different studios in the last few years right (laughs) and we just moved into um one that hopefully is a little more permanent it's in the common commonwealth development building which is like same building as giant jones brewery and uh old sugar yeah are kind of the but there's a bunch of businesses in there and it's a really awesome space and there's a lot of potential and um yeah i'm just like really excited to we've we just started classes there like a few weeks ago yeah and it's it's just yeah it's just so great to just be painting people again with my friends and just yeah i just love getting back into it i just it was um it was nice initially at the pan when the pandemic started but real quick i just started missing that and just realizing how much that, how important that was to me what's the setup like there on because i remember so i know the setup of the place that you ha- <clears throat> place that you had in a building that now doesn't exist anymore so what's the what's the setup in in this new place because you used to have a skylight and all that kind of stuff and i know that i think i've been in the room that you're mm-hmm. in now yep and there's still skylights yep there yep. are skylights in there yep. okay i couldn't remember i just know that it's really really tall ceilings yeah it's enormous <laughs> it used to be like they used to house buses in there it used to be like badger bus or the they the did? city bus or something yeah it used to be the bus station oh i guess it's madison huge. metro is right next door isn't it yeah, I don't totally know the history of the building. I know, yeah, at one point they made dog food in my building. <laughs> I don't totally know the history of that building, but like, <laughs> they make um, dog food. it's a beautiful space though. I right. mean, I would love North Light, but I kind of gave up on a, a studio with big windows that face north yeah. and, and are high up. Um, I haven't given up, but um, as far as like a public community space, something, you know, I'm not going to like buy a garage and convert that although i might Mm -hmm. um but no that's a lot of potential there's two rooms and so um i i didn't have that before so i can kind of separate my my kind of private studio from my public classroom Mm, okay and with that i actually just thought too with that and i asked you the size of the paintings that you're doing is it going to be kind of like a put a goldfish in a larger bowl thing and are your are your paintings absolutely (laughs) yep you're just gonna get bigger that analogy before totally Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 20 by 24 in this room would look enormous right you know what i mean like yeah. that's a real thing yep yeah you totally see that <laughs> that's a that's a big reason i wanted that space okay well that's so huge. what are some of your plans for bigger things i i know that you've done a few murals um in the past couple of years mm-hmm. or maybe you've done more before that i mean what are your plans for larger pieces um are they just gonna be giant portraits no i don't i think I it's weird that, when that someone's be, head is like bigger know, than life I'm size it just now. weirds me out <laughs> i don't like i don't know people do it but i don't like when a head is bigger than life size right people do it but like <laughs> it's kind of rare but i would like a full I, i'd like to do some full-size portraits uh-huh. you know like like an eight foot tall one or something um but other pieces uh other larger ones um i mean right now my focus is just setting up the space but i would love to um, there's certainly potential to like do larger murals in there yeah. for sure. That's what it was, uh, Jenny Gao's old studio and she was doing murals in there. Yeah. And are um, you going to be moving your classes from, uh, Madison college over there? Or are you going to be going to Madison college to do them? No, I'm not going to have the classes in Madison college there. I, I go to Madison college to do that. Okay. And how do you, how do you actually orchestrate all these classes that you're teaching and paint? I mean, I mean, obviously you're painting in the class, but it's, it just seems it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. How do you, how do you manage all this? Uh, I don't really know. (laughs) Um, I mean, it's a lot right now because I was like setting up curriculum and like starting the studio and it's always been a lot, but like, I don't have, I don't, it's just my life and I don't have like, I don't have a lot of other obligations and, um, I, after a while, it's a lot of it is somewhat streamlined, uh-huh. you know, like you, the website's built, you know, the, there's just like things that kind of have been done that you don't need to do anymore. Um, I'm very thoughtful about that though. That's a big concern of mine actually, just with all the, yeah, just with all the stuff going on, I'm going to have other people running the studios. And I was just, just going to ask, do you have anybody helping? Yep. Yep. And then separating the spaces is really helpful too. So I'm not constantly converting the spaces and like, um, separating the spaces is also helpful so you can have like private students coming in and working on their own and they're not in my space 
Um, but it is something that I'm very conscious of is just like being, uh, I just need to be very deliberate about, about, um, you know, separate, just time for myself because Mm -hmm. I, I haven't been. And it's just, I think if you focus on it, you can do that and still accommodate and provide what you need to do. Yeah. And it's one of those things too, where it's like, if something goes wrong or like, say, you know, uh, you get sick or something or you get a cold and you can't then that's a day that you're not able to one make money doing the classes and then two it's it, i mean it's just a personal thing going like oh i feel like i'm when when i do things like that it feels like oh i'm letting people down because i didn't do what i said i was going to yeah, do yeah, that yeah. day even though it's something that's just like totally yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. yep yep i'm the same way yeah 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 i had to run off for there's a class right now that's going on and i had to run off and i felt a little bad but um right. And yeah, but, but at the same time, it's like, they're, they don't need me there to draw. They are having fun, (laughs) but like, yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's a great community and they kind of know the drill. And so they could, they can certainly, um, I mean, I love to be there, Mm -hmm. but I also, I just can't be there all the time. And when did you decide to, cause you're doing this full time now, you're not driving cab anymore, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did you, how did you finally realize that it was time that you could switch to just, this is it. This is the full time. So, uh, well drive at least union cab, which is awesome. Shout out to union cab. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, you could just like slowly, you could slowly, you know, I was working four days a week, then I was working three days a week, then I was working like weekends and then every other week. It was weekend. just kind of tapering off and you were seeing it. Yeah. And I just started teaching more and just making more money with art. And then, but also like there was less money available with cabs, I think just with like Uber and stuff. But now I think that's changed, but now, um, I just have enough going on, but, um, teaching is, it helps, right? I'm not making most of my money selling pictures. It's mostly teaching. Yeah. Well, in and, and doing stuff like that, it's also, this This is the part that I always have trouble with. Um, not trouble, but I always find when I'm done that I'm behind on the stuff that I want to do. So it's, it's kind of the give and take of being an artist. A way to get paid to be one is to do things for other people, to make things, to do the commissions, like you said. But then when you're working on that, it seems for me personally, this is just me I get it. personally yeah, saying yeah, here. No, yeah, it, it, it just seems like, uh, man, I just spent all this time working on something <laughs> for someone else. And, totally. And, but you got paid for it and it helps you sustain it. So, um, it also helps you get better at it. It also helps true. you learn new. It like pushes your comfort zone. It pushes your, like, you know, what's your, it, you, you might, you have an opportunity to explore new mediums or new approaches or new uh-huh. subject matter or new, like, hopefully you can find some inspiration within that to like motivate you to, you know, or you ask for more money <laughs> or, or you say no. Um, right. you know, like there's, there's like, but I also, I also feel like, um, like I lean into that. Like I love, I love, um, the challenge of finding inspiration. And, and that doesn't stop at paintings. I think anyone doing any work for any person, mm-hmm. like hopefully is finding some inspiration that like, you know, is, is hopefully beyond a paycheck and, and maybe it's just a paycheck. Cause it's like, you know, I can crank this out and it's, right. it's easy money, but even then you're still learning something if you're painting. Um, but I also, you know, I have those sessions a lot and I, and I really love painting people and that mm-hmm. I, I, I kind of scratch that itch of the work that I want to do by doing that. And yeah, I still am. I'm like kind of, because I've, I've just been teaching more. I'm, I'm able to kind of pick and choose different commissions. Yeah. And you've done some commissions for, I know on your website, it said you did them for Epic American girl and you've done them for the UW. Now the UW yeah. first of all, is that the, you, the, did the, uh, Bucky thing? Yeah, that was, that was a different one though. Yeah. I did okay, one of those, those Bucky's. Different. Yeah. I, I did like this anatomy Bucky. I was just like geeking out on anatomy. Which at I the think time. is, where is that? That's actually located somewhere. I saw it recently and now it escapes me. So good story, Tom. It's um, at the, uh, <laughs> it's at the, um, the in-towner, the hotel. There you go. Okay. Uh, on old university. Yeah. Um, and then, but the one on the one that that was referring to is I did one in the old union South bowling alley and then they tore down that and built the new union South. Oh, yeah. What did you do in there? 
just like a big bowling craziness come on really yeah <laughs> do you yeah. have pictures of it somewhere i mean yeah I, know we can't I think it's it on right my now. website okay i think All so right. i didn't see it i maybe i just it was i mean probably it is, i was on. pretty young I, I wouldn't be surprised if i didn't put it up there but i can show you pictures i like that okay yeah, yeah. and then what did you end up doing for uh epic and for american girl uh american girl um my friend alicia real got me this gig where we were doing uh we were doing backdrops for um backdrops for like their catalog basically just like painting these giant murals that would go for the in catalog the, yeah we'd go in the background of like the girls and the dolls and stuff um really? and then there was also some wood build outs yeah it was actually it was it was such an awesome opportunity to like um like i learned how theater painters paint which is crazy they like stretch it out on the ground this like 20 foot long maybe it's 40 feet I don't yeah, know. it was this enormous canvas that you're standing on, and you're holding like a stick of bamboo, and you have like charcoal or a brush at the other end of the bamboo, and you're like walking on this canvas. It's crazy. It's <laughs> like it's a whole. <laughs> it's it's wild. Why do you have wait chalk and okay chalk and ba- are you like chalking it out first, and then you're gonna paint it in, or what was like the I chalk don't and totally bamboo remember, but it's me. like I think it's just it's just faster to be standing on your canvas, okay, and walking and and painting from like. Because then you're seeing it from six feet away, I guess, if you're six feet tall. Oh. Um, and, yeah, you're painting with, like, watered-down house paint. It was just, like, very different, but it was also very applicable to, in, in certain ways, what I was doing. And I, I just, like, I, I love that, kind of getting getting paid to learn a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then Epic, there's, like, this ice cave, and they have this underground auditorium. And <laughs> there was this, like, we just painted icicles for, like, seven months, man. <laughs> I mean, it was like, it, was, it wasn't just icicles, but it was like, but it was, you learn a lot just again. brushing over, there was this ice cave. It's a <laughs> massive ice cave. This ice cave is 16 feet tall, and then it was the perimeter of a football field. Like, if you can imagine the scale of this thing, it was massive. And the, okay. the, the thing that, again, you're painting with latex paint. And I'm like, I don't think I'm like a paint snob, but like latex paint, I will never. <laughs> but you learn a lot with latex paint in the sense that like, uh, it's almost like fresco in the sense that you you can kind of water it down, but you can't paint translucently. Like if you lay that paint down, you got 30 seconds to get it how you want it. It's going to dry darker also, which mm-hmm. is fun. Uh, and if it's not how you want it, you repaint it. And th- I think with, with painting, uh, probably with a lot of things, we have this idea of like, I'll fix that later. I'll get back to that. Okay. But, um, you know, it was like, just like a real lesson. And like, what if you, what if you have to get it right, right now? Like, and that's, that's how it is with fresco, right? If you're working into wet plaster, like if you don't get it how you want it, you're chipping out that plaster and redoing it. And so, um, it really, Oh, cause it, it was going to soak in and, or is it, it, they're like mixing the pigments into the plaster. Oh, with wow. fresco yeah oh so this was wait you're painting as it's being built like you're working no with no the no, no. Okay. i'm just talking right. about fresco i'm using like an example the construction of fresco. people no, 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 were no. there and you're working with them okay no i'm just i'm just like kind of trying to illustrate this idea of like um you know with with graphite people are just like they build it up slowly in mm-hmm. layers and with um you know with oil paint it's just like it's gonna stay wet you can you can go back in and adjust those colors or edges or whatever but with uh when I did that mural in latex paint, I was just like, what if I applied this to the, you know, what if I, what if when I cover this square section of canvas in the next, you know, with this brush stroke or these next few brush strokes, mm-hmm. what if I'm not able to come back to that? And you work in a, in a really different manner, but it was like, yeah, it it's, um, yeah, that was, that was, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot I learned with that project, but, um, did they present the ideas that they wanted done to you? Or did you say, here's what we can do in this? I guess the two things that you just told me about, very different than what we've talked about artistically. Uh, all of them were, you know. Yeah, it, you're not really choosing the subject matter. Okay, so they're saying we want this. Then then how did you how did you land these again then? <laughs> how did I land them? Just the art community, you know? Yeah. I don't know. And again, people. it's just knowing people, huh? I mean, I guess so. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. 
I just yeah. find that fascinating. I still like the ice caves. I can't get past the ice caves thing. Go visit. So, it. Go visit. It. Can you go? You in, can go visit. Yeah. I try drive cool. every time I try driving by that area. It's always either it's when they're wild. getting in it's or they're crazy. getting out. So it's yeah, always yeah. like traffic jam. No, you can go visit. It's worth a visit. It's okay. Pretty wild. Oh, how long ago was that? Uh, that was 2014, 15, something okay. like that. Right. Yeah. It was cool. I mean, it was, it was, yeah, it was a big learning experience. The whole thing was, and like all of those, I just love, yeah, I love that kind of getting paid to learn basically. Right. So <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, that's all still really funny. Uh, what other kind of, um, of things do you have coming up like uh, did we cover what you want to do with uh, i may have just gone into the mural murals but like the type of stuff you want to do at the studio the space yeah uh well i'm really excited just to like be able to offer more classes and just like separating my private space from the public space i just you know i could just like provide a lot more opportunities i could have other people teaching i'm going to get other people teaching in workshops uh I thought about a sculpture component. Might have that at some point. It would be really cool to have like figure sculpture. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I mean, basically right now, um, yeah, I just, I'm just like, it was really hard for me to offer that many options when it was like, it was oh, just all one room. I didn't room. even think of that. Yeah. If I'm, it's just one room, you're kind of limited, you know, yeah. because it's like, if I'm working at painting in there, I, I can't have a class in there. Yeah. And and also if you have if you start adding sculptures to it as well, then you, you got sculpture room. stuff around. Hmm. Do you plan on like doing anything to the space? Because right now, if I'm not mistaken, you said there's two rooms, but the one room is a very big one. Do you ever think of sectioning them off or creating other rooms? Uh well there's 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 two rooms. There's just there's the classroom and there's the, my my studio, but then there's also just like a little like kind of kitchenette area. Um, I don't think I need any more rooms. I mean, I could, maybe I could use some, but like that figure room is like, that's, that's, I don't, I don't really, I'd have a hard time making, um, yeah, I'd have a hard time kind of dividing it up more. Okay. But, um, yeah. The main thing I would really love is just natural light, like a North. Like that what? is one of the constants I've heard you say in all the times that I've spoken to you. And also because you have you have been moving several times over the past couple of years. So, because uh, the one that you had that was a temporary space, you said that that did not have natural light. The place you were at in between them rebuilding the building you were in. And I know that, yeah, that was an important yeah. thing. It is cool that you have skylights, so I am glad about that. Skylights are cool, yeah, yeah, yep. They kind of fill out the spectrum a little bit, so you can kind of just see the colors on your canvas more. But as far as lighting the model and lighting your canvases in, like, a kind of soft, consistent, indirect light, um, that's why artists have, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, they have the they have the, the, the North light. Um, but someday, when my ship comes in, <laughs> right. it'll happen. Actually, speaking of canvases, so here was a fascinating thing that just popped into my head, and I was curious about it. And I'm sure it's probably one of those things where it's like, well, it's completely obvious, but I don't know the answer. The um, When we did the session where I was posing for the class, and you had reused a canvas or something like that, how does that work? So you're putting oil on there. There's a lot of stuff in there. And we'd even talked about when you work in Fresco that you would have to, you know, when something was done on there it would be difficult to reuse it but you said you had re reused some canvases or redo like what's the process in doing that i'm just curious because i i don't well know the oil, you, you just do paint it. over it do you you just paint over it but do you have to scrape it because it is isn't it thick you could yeah i like to scrape it down just so you don't have like you're not working on top of like paint ridges yeah but yeah different like different different mediums are more reversible than others okay you know like oil you could you could just paint over same thing with acrylic Okay. Like it's actually easier to paint over, but like water, no one's doing that with watercolor. No, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Although I suppose you could, it would just be extra wrinkly paper. I don't know. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you could, but I mean, and, it's cheaper too. Yeah, and I wanted to ask that mainly because when you first told that to me, I did that thing where I just went like, "Oh yeah, of course, sure." Like, like I knew exactly what you're talking about. And then the more I thought about it, I'm thinking in my head, I'm going to figure it out in my own head later on. <laughs> yeah, but I did not. So, and, and it's fairly obvious, I suppose. Um, now, what kind of things do you have coming up? Do you have any galleries that you're trying to get right now or any plans for putting together art shows or putting your stuff out there publicly? Uh, well, I just had a few shows. I, I did the Faces of Incarceration one at mm -hmm. um, at Bethel Lutheran. I had, I had some work up at the Alchemy and 
I like I wanted to do like a local show so I like get a bunch of like east side my paintings of people from the east side or like local east side personalities yeah then I started painting people who work there um make it like extra local you did yeah okay um and I kind of like that idea like I don't know if you're putting a show up in a in a space to like just like really personalize it um but uh, right now I don't have any. No, I mean I want to. I'm looking forward to like getting my space in a or in a in a place where I can kind of you know feel good about the public coming in and have a have a show there, like a probably a group show of of all of our work. Um, but I don't have anything right now. No. Okay. It's. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. You asking me? No, I don't know. Um, so you painted the people there. I forget how fast you paint. Um, <laughs> so how many how many people did you actually paint while you were there? So you're setting up and you're like, I'm going to start painting. You had people sit down or like, how did that go about? Oh, you said you were painting the people that worked at the place. Oh, or did you I, invite I just, them to your just, studio? Yeah, same way, same thing that you did. Yeah, gotcha. we, they just came and sat for us. Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. But you learned it. Yeah. Like that was that was one of the big learning experiences when I left New York was just like figuring out how to apply that because they were 80 hour poses we had a model on the stage for four hours a day for a month wow and so yeah i mean you're like you get pretty detailed there but like and i feel like you kind of have to go through that process to be able to kind of abbreviate in the way that to be able to see and articulate that i think is pretty it's it's just really helpful to be able to if you're trying to simplify it, mm -hmm. but yeah, applying that to like these like three or four hour poses was, um, it was, it took a, took a while. Okay. I, I meant to ask earlier too, do you guys have a service that you use? Like when you can't find a model, do you have somebody where you can call up and just, there's Man. a, no? Well, I, I got models on the, the, Oh, you do. The, okay. I mean, I got models that are like, I guess that's smart. Tonight, actually, our model is like, hey, can you show up tomorrow? <laughs> <It> happens <laughs> a lot. But like worst case scenario, I sit or one of the participants sit. Okay. Yeah. Makes a lot I of mean, sense. I just didn't know if there was actually a service in here, but you were saying there isn't much of a call for that type of stuff here in Madison yet, and that's what you wanted to change. So I guess that makes sense that it wouldn't really exist. I mean, models will reach out to me. There are, like, they, they do have models at the university and they have models at Madison College, but... Oh, yeah. um, it's a different type of thing and it's not it's not uh, those classes aren't open to the public mm -hmm. but but there are there's yeah there's but also we have a lot of portraits and so it's just like it's not you don't need to be like a professional model you know it's it's nice if you're doing like short poses to have some experience but like um and definitely people who you know some of these models sit still really well and they're just amazing <laughs> but like we roll with whatever right yeah it's it's hard to sit still. I don't. I still don't. Can't believe that I sat still for that long. I was pretty. I was. I was impressed with myself. Let's put it that way. That I sat still that long. Um, yeah, yeah. It's not easy. No, it's not easy for sure. <laughs> Do you sell a lot of stuff online? Are you selling your work online? I mean, I sell a good amount for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially considering their portraits. But like, yeah, some of them. I mean, they're for sale on the website. Uh, if you're curious, it's my name, which is Philip Salamoni. Um, I guess Dot com. Spell that. Yeah, I could spell <laughs> it, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I sell like they're they're a little less marketable because it's like it's portraits. You know, it's not a right. landscape. It's not a still life. And so it's like if you don't know that person, and even if you do know that person, a lot of times you don't want like a picture of yourself on the wall or whatever. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I still have more pictures than I'd like to have. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm happy with. Yeah, like I'm, yeah. Like, How difficult it is is it to ship an oil painting? It's not hard. No? No, I had a few break. <laughs> but well, it's well then it's somewhat tough. hard, I suppose. Well, um, I'm learning. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you, it's... it's um, Like you're not just shoving them in a box. Are you doing like memory foam or anything like that? Or like that spray foam where it will expand once you put it in there? I don't do that. I no, saw no, a really no, interesting no, no, no. tutorial that. on that the other day. <laughs> yeah, no, it's nothing like that. No, some... Uh, yeah, no, there's different like styrofoam stuff you can use. Or like, um, I think it is tougher than a drawing that you would roll up. But yeah. at least there's no like, you know, there's no matting. There's no glass. It's just like... 
Uh, and it is like pretty sturdy cause I glue them to boards. I don't have them stretched over stretcher bars. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, I suppose it would fall apart if you rolled it up, wouldn't it? Well, you could roll it, but then what is the, what is the, what do they do once they get it? Then they have to stretch it over stretcher bars and you don't, you, you can know. just make an instruction booklet like Ikea and tell them this. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could. <laughs> But also just like when it, when canvases are stretched over stretcher bars, it's not archival because they, they don't, they're not as, um, they're, they're just like more likely to crack. And so you want to, ideally they're glued to a board or they're just painted on a board. Yeah. Um, because yeah, like humidity fluctuates and the paint gets brittle. Um, but, um, yeah, different ways of doing it. Yeah. It's, do you do a freight or like, I guess. Sorry, I, I ship a lot of things, so I'm really I'm really trying to picture, like, if I had a painting, how would I do that? Because it's, I'm curious how, if, if like, maybe if people who do paint are afraid to ship, and um, what's the farthest you ever sent something? Oh, I just asked a bunch of questions in a row. I'm really thinking out loud here. I just <laughs> send them all over, yeah. I don't really know. I, th- I guess I just, like, wrap it in bubble wrap, and then, like, okay. put it in, like, a box (laughs) and like i guess there's some like reinforcements but not it's not i'm overthinking it is what you're telling me there's like i don't i think there's a lot of things in this kind of in in the way that i do things that's like i just there's not i don't know the way that people do stuff i just like this has worked for me and except for a few paintings that broke (laughs) yeah but like overall it's it's um yeah i just like just be super careful and i just like extra you know just like put a put it in a box within a box or something or just like a ton that's of the best method, method that i got is somebody told me to put it in a box in a box i was shipping things and i just surround it in like whatever kind of padding i thought it could be and that was just bouncing around inside and then... yeah no nothing nothing can bounce <laughs> no man but it's also like it's it's on a board right it's a canvas glued to a board so it's like it's not gonna you know okay. you gotta like really try to break it hmm but it's not like I'm shipping things all over. Most of the time, it's it's the sales are like local. Yeah, know, no, I was. That, I'm happy to hear that you're selling online, and I know that you do a lot of stuff locally. So it's it's. I just think it's such a great market. Uh, just having the ability to be on uh, to sell things online with the Christmas season coming up and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had a lot of luck for sure. Yeah, totally. And the, so, what other things do you have coming up or planned in the future? Is there any other things you'd like to mention? to people any new artists that you're checking out these days i guess i didn't ask you about who you're interested in these days any new artists anything i got planned uh you know my big plans are just setting up this space i just feel like it's a lot of work setting up this this new studio and just like kind of getting something ready for the public while still having this this job that i'm trying to do really good at um and then uh new artists i mean my favorite artists are like my people that are painting at the studio right now. There you go. I just realized I, mean, I was setting you up on that one. <laughs> well, yeah, like they're amazing, but I'm not just like, but I'm, but like they're, it actually is like really beautiful. Like, man, just like over the years, you figure out how to make like really, really, really beautiful, like really skillful, uh, really awesome work. And, um, I'm not just saying that. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you.